Welcome. It's my honor to welcome all of you to a very special evening. We're honored, and it's my honor to introduce the Holocaust Survivors Band, led by Saul Dreyer. He'll tell you his story. I won't age him, but he was born in 1925 in, in Poland, and he has quite a story to share. First of all, I'd like to thank the sponsors, the Keep Skin Community Foundation, uh, together with Islander News, who made this event possible. Special thank you to Melissa from the foundation and Andrew, who put in um, tireless hours of work and coordination with incredible <laughs> attention to detail. We're very grateful for your uh, partnership in this beautiful event. We're also thankful to each of you for coming out here. We're all here more or less for the same reason, because we care. We deeply care. We care about the stories that Saul will share, and we care about the message of overcoming, overcoming challenge that he embodies. You know, we, we chose this event when Zeldi and I were, were thinking of this event, and we wanted to do a, a Holocaust-related event. We landed on Saul for, you know, specifically for a, for a unique reason, because the first, the first goal of this kind of event is to educate about the history of the Holocaust, the atrocities that took place not so long ago, not so far away. And these are things that we have to know with, with rise in anti-Semitism that's happening across the world and in our country. It's important to hear firsthand their stories. I, I'm happy that there's a lot of young people here who are, ca are, are, are able to have the opportunity to hear firsthand from somebody who was there, experienced it with his own eyes. But the second reason that we chose uh, to have this event, and this was specifically for somebody like Saul, is because the story of the Jewish people and the Holocaust is not just about what happened to us, but what we did after. The rebuilding of the Jewish people to, come, to bounce back from, from, such a, from such an unimaginable tragedy, to rebuild and to be future-oriented is, is a way of living that Saul represents so beautifully. To, to pick up your life after the Holocaust and in your 80s decide that, you know what? Hitler stole my youth, but I'm taking it back. And, and I'm, going to, I'm going to start this, this band, this Holocaust survivors band, is inspiring enough for us to come out in the rain and, and hear his story. Um, if it keeps on raining, you can move under the cover, but this might, just, this might pass. Um, it's my honor to introduce Saul Dreyer and the Holocaust survivors band They'll start us off with one joyous song that was Saul's idea, and then he'll share his story, followed by some more music. Welcome, Saul Dreyer and the Holocaust Survivor Band.
I'll take a few minutes, Saul will share his story, some of his story, and then after the concert, Saul will stay for some questions and answers. Uh, after the music, you guys will do the questions, he'll do the answers. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Yeah. Well, you are more than lucky because I'm still alive. <laughs> anyway, my name is Sal Dreyer. I live in Florida. I live in Coconut Creek near Boca. And I play all over the world. I am 97 and a half years old. I have four children. I've got eight grandchildren and three great, great children. The majority of them are living in Florida, except one son who has been a chief pilot and a, and a captain, retired from a major airline and decided to live in Israel. And I just had a, a boy, grandson, two and a half years ago in Israel. Well, I'm going to tell you a little story, so be, be, because after the concert, you're probably going to want to find out who I am. I have been living in three concentration camps during four and a half years. My first concentration camp was Plasz of Krakow. I was born in Krakow, Poland. My second concentration camp was Schindler's Factory. I mean Schindler's concentration camp. My third one was Mauthausen. And my one that I was liberated, I was liberated in Linz, Austria. I was liberated and I don't remember the day because I was living in a very, very bad situation which someday I'm gonna write about it. And that's why I don't remember when I was liberated. But anyway, when I was 89 years old, by seven years ago, eight years ago, I woke up one morning uh, and I they said on the, on the computer, a woman, 106 years old, a very important piano player, passed away. And she was a Holocaust survivor. And this got me very interesting. I told myself, I would like to do something for this woman. There are 350 million people living in the United States. I came with the idea to put together a Holocaust survivor event. Well, ladies and gentlemen, your clapping wasn't so easy. Anyway, I woke up my wife, at that, at that time she's still alive, and I told her the story, what I wanted to do. She says, well, she tells me two words. You're crazy. <laughs> I was retired already 10, 12 years. Well, this was on a Thursday. And on a Saturday, I went to the synagogue. We had services. After the Kiddush, we had lunch. And I'm sitting next to my rabbi. My rabbi was a Holocaust, he passed away too. My rabbi was a Holocaust survivor child. So I said, Rabbi Henry, I want to tell you something. I want, I want your opinion. So I says, Rabbi, and I told him the same story I told my, my wife. So he says, hey, Sal, you're 10 years retired. What do you need this for? In an accent, you know, not mine, a his. What, what do you need this for? I got news for you. You're crazy. Well, people, when two people tell you you're crazy, you, you go to a crazy house. I didn't. A Monday morning, I took a blank check and went to Sam Ash. You know who Sam Ash is? It's a store all over the United States that sells instruments. And I walked up to the manager. I was at 10, 89 years old. I said, I would like to buy a set of drums. He's looking at me. He says, what? <laughs> Are you want to buy it by me a set of drums? What are you going to win with it? I said, I'm going to play. I said, you are a drummer? He says, no. So I said, why do I have drums? Because God told me to play the drums. So he agreed. He, I got the drums. I, at that time, I had a small Lexus. So I loaded up the drums. 
in the front, in the back, in the seat, on the top. A guy helped me, and I'm driving home a very happy musician at Rome. I come home, I come upstairs. My wife is uh, sitting with, my, with her aide. I says, hello. So she said, who were you? I says, I went shopping. I says, yes, what did you buy? I says, well, I bought, I bought you a present. <laughs> she says, yes, well, let me see it. I says, Clara, I tell you the truth. The present is so big that you have to come downstairs to the car to look at it. My wife was smarter than me. She get dressed, she comes down. She comes down, I open the drops, and she starts yelling, give out! I said, what are you yelling? Either you drum go or the drums go. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, you can find your own wife. Somehow, I appeased her, and I had my first concert. I went to my rabbi, I, I rented the synagogue, and I pay all the expenses. So the rabbi comes to me and says, Sal, how much you can pay? I'm gonna charge for the tickets. I says, nothing. He said, what, you crazy? I says, the rabbi, if I'm gonna charge for the tickets, nobody gonna show up. If I'm gonna charge nothing, I'm gonna be full. He says, oh, you're right. And that's what I did. I advertise, as a matter of fact, here sitting Mel, Mel the first one that played with me on this concert, and we filled up the hall with people. At that time, I was very happy, but what I did, I took my wife with my aide and her girlfriend and my daughter and set them in the first row. And I was on the stage playing. When I finished, oh, my wife next to me like that. So I come, what can I do? She says, Sal, I tell you one thing. I'm living with you 51 years. We had children, grandchildren. I didn't believe that you were a celebrity. That's how I started. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now let's, let's give you some music. And later I'm going to answer question after the concert, all right? Thank you.
anybody who want to enjoy us, play with us, to sing with us? Is there any singer in the audience? Lipa Schmelzer. Any, I beg your pardon? Lipa Schmelzer. Oh, Lipa Schmelzer, no, he's in Brooklyn now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to play a few songs for you more. Then I'm going to give you some answering questions. That's why I don't want you to run away. You stay here and listen to me, because I'm a very, very interesting person. <laughs> yes. Well, Mel, let's get a little Yiddish.
Well, well, did you enjoy? Yes. They did. Thank you very much, Shami. Thank you very much, Haim. Thank you very much, Pide. Thank you very much, Mel. And thank, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Give an away. Thank you, audience. Hey, thank you very much for everything. You are one audience. Now, I give you a nice few minutes. I'm going to have to pack in and everything and take a little while. So, any questions? Any questions from the audience? I know it's a very sensitive subject, but I've read a lot about where the older generation now is beginning to talk about it, but for many, many years, nobody would really expound upon what had happened. I got a wonderful answer for this lady. Number one, I decided, until I be alive, that I was gonna beat anti-Semitism. And I made a lot of films, I made a lot of shows, concert, the biggest one I had with Dudu Fischer, and Bet El uh, Get Elbas in Warsaw, Poland. We played and show how the anti-Semitism exists today in the whole world. Number two, I am trying now to put together the young people with the older people they should connect. I speak in schools, I speak in universities, and I also speak to people like you whenever I have a chance. I travel all over the world. I just put together a, a foundation under my name, South Generation Foundation. And this foundation is going to operate in three, three ways. One way, going to connect the young with the old so your people don't forget that we had a Holocaust. Number two, we're going to try to connect all people, all the, because we all have one heart. So one heart, so remember, we all the same, except people haven't got no feeling one for the other. We have to make sure that this, uh, the anti-Semitism disappears, and I'm trying the best I can. And also, I, I'm willing to help all the Holocaust survivors that will finish their life in dignity. This is gonna be my, my number three. And number four gonna be, I'm gonna try to uh, put together and help people mentally sick. So if you want to look me up all over the world, I'm all over, um, I got my page on the Sal Generation Foundation. You, I'll be willing to help you. Call me, my phone is them, there. I can talk to you. I would like to meet some, any, are there any Holocaust survivors here? Any children for Holocaust survival? Child, yeah? Any play over there? Wait. So I would like to meet with the Holocaust survivors, and I would like to have a nice session with everybody. Yeah, I have a question. Okay. So um, first of all, thank you. That was just delightful. Um, I can hear. And I, I suppose in some ways it brings you back to your youth with the traditional Jewish music. And it brings me back to my youth as well because I am Darling. a child of two Polish survivors. When you said that you went in at age 87 and bought a drum set and started the band, there's a part of me, I, I spent my youth every summer in a sleepaway camp in the Catskill Mountains for children of survivors a bilingual camp, Yiddish, English, that was filled with music, and the music director was Zalman Mletik, who then went on to completely revive the Jewish theater in New York. Um, and we were just filled with music in Yiddish and Russian and English, all the traditional. I'm wondering, it seems to me you had um, a background in music before at age 87. You bought the drums and started this wonderful band. Did you go back? What does it go back to the concentration camp? I camps? understand now what you're saying. In concentration camp, in Schindler's factory, mm -hmm. I had a friend who was a, a cantor. You know what a cantor is, a hazen. You know what a hazen is. 
all right. And he was singing after war. We work. We all came. The boys was singing. He was he was composing music and everything. I was not singing. I was laying on the third floor there. You know the floors we had. A bed on the bottom, bed in the middle, bed on the top. The, we call it the preachers. And I was laying there, and I listened to how he sings. The boys are singing with him. And I wanted to do something about it. So I was working in a factory where we were fixing radiators for the Messerschmitts, for the German aeroplanes. And the factory had some Polish people working. And one of them was my, a friend of mine who went to school with me to, to, together. And I had a little spoon food and spoon I couldn't eat. I had to drink my soup they were giving me there. And the food was very scarce. So I saw I, the, the fellow was helping me. He was helping me with bread. He had a, 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 a lacquer, and I knew his opening. So I said, Stanislav, you have to do me a favor. So he says, what do you want? I want you to bring me a two, uh, two spoons, all right? And he brought me two spoons. And I had the spoons to eat, of course, laying on the, on the I'm bad at night, they're singing. I came with the idea. I came with the idea. This is the replica of the spoons that he gave me. I came with the idea and I took, I took the spoons and I turned them over and I put them like that. And I started to play with them. Ya da 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 ra 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 la 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 ra 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 la 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 ra 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 ta da ra 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 ra. And they were singing with me. After the war, I was I was liberated, and I was shipped by the Jewish brigade to Italy. And I was living in Italy for five years. And over there, we were recu recuperating from the, from the war, of course. I was wounded. You can see I'm missing a finger. I was op operating a hand. I had a shrapnel in the bag, and I had a shrapnel in my head. I didn't know nothing about it. But and over there, one day, the, com the camp commander brought a piano and brought a set of drums. Nobody uh, I had, they had volunteers for the piano but there were no volunteers for the drums. And I was the one that I decided to learn how to play the drums in the DP camp in, Pol in uh, Italy. You got the answer? <laughs> Let you to ask me one more question because I'm very tired <laughs> and I have to take care of my musician and I have to take care of myself. Hi, I'm Sharon, and you just mentioned a DP camp. My parents were liberated in Bergen-Belsen. Yes. They married in Bergen-Belsen yes. in 1946. Yes. I was born there, now you all know my age, in 1948. 1948. And it is an honor and a privilege to see you and hear your beautiful music. I know it's not a question, um, but I just want to say that I'm honored to be here, and I'm going to get very emotional because my father and mother were born in 1926. Beautiful. Yeah, uh, and sadly, they it's perished. Not they, they're not there. 20 years ago, I lost them, but they live in my heart, and you bring them back to me with your beautiful music. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. I give you the end, Sandet. Ladies and gentlemen, I want, to, I want to give you a little secret. Not a secret. It's an open record, but I don't advertise. I'm a triple survivor. You know what a triple survivor is, or you don't? 1945, I survived the war. I survived Hitler. When I was almost 65 years, I had cancer. They cut my stomach out, almost. I lived with the cancer already 30 to 30 some years. On top of it, I was playing in Las Vegas for Sheldon, Edelman who passed away, you know, in his Venetian hotel, with Dudu Fischer. And after the concert, I got a stroke. I went to sleep. Following morning, my manager, who is Polish, she said, told me, Sal, I would like to take a car, go to the canyon. 
I said, go borrow a car. So I went with her to the counselor, and I asked a car. Soon she rented the car, and I paid $10 for parking. I'm walking with two fellows that were together in Las Vegas, musicians, and if I felt, and I got another stroke, where the ambulance came in, and I was completely out of it. I walked up, I walked up in the ambulance. I had two men with me and my manager. So in the ambulance I woke up, so the medic tells me, I would like to, you should ask me three questions. So he answered me, he asked me, what's my name? I told him, Saul Dreyer. Where are you from? I told him, from Florida. Who is the president of the United States? And I forgot that Trump was the president where his grandson his, uh, uh, his uh, Vanka's husband, grandfather is my best friend, we were in business together. So that's what a stroke makes. I went to the hospital. I was three days in the hospital. Finally, they let me out on the one condition that I'm going to take every two hours, two Tylenol in the airplane on the way home. So I did that. Then I went to Brazil, and I had two concerts in Brazil, in, in Sao Paulo. I played with, Dudu, with, I play with Get El Bass, with his orchestra, and I had my orchestra that I put together in, in, on there. I had a private concert in a house. Uh, so when they brought me to the house, I thought I'm going to jail, because I walked through, through doors till I got to the house. That's how security is there. There was a man there who was picking up, I mean, he was saving bicycle, and else also he was saving drum. So as a matter of fact, he gave me a present. He gave me a snail, a big snail, with a Jewish star and with the, and with the color of Brazilian uh, color of the flag. And I brought this with me. So wherever I go in on a concert, before you see me, I don't start like this, but I knew they changed my venue. I usually come from the back and play those drums, and my orchestra waits for me. And that's the story, lady. Did I give you the good answer? Where is she? OK. I thank you very much. God bless you. And look me up. If you got any business for me, I'm still available. I play, I sing, I dedicate, and I dance. Thank you. Sal, we're so grateful you joined us tonight. It's not so often that you can tell somebody almost 98 years old that we're grateful you took time out of your busy schedule and you came to play a concert in Key Biscayne. But that's exactly what we have to say. Oh.